Before I start this video, let me take 30 seconds to tell you something about Exergic. Exergic is India's most trusted and most experienced institute for online gate preparation. I am Chandresh Mahajan, founder and chief educator at Exergic. I am an All India Rank 37 in gate mechanical engineering, an ex Indian oil officer having 7 plus years of teaching experience as of now. To know more about our gate courses, you can visit our website or contact us on these details. Also, you can download Exergic Gate Preparation app from Google Play Store. The link is available in the description of video. Now have a look at this interesting question. Question is easy, but I have made this question slightly tricky. So it's an MSQ question. It's a tricky question, which will test your basics, which will test your basics. Have a look at this question. If P1 is equal to 240 Newton, obviously in this diagram, if P1 is 240 Newton and P2 is 100 Newton, which of these statements are true? Have a look at this diagram. You can see a truss being shown here. C has hinge support, B has roller support. This is a support that has been given. The distance between them is 5 cm and this is the truss that you have. At point D, P1 and P2 are applied. P1 is 240 Newton, P2 is 100 Newton. Which of these statements are true? Question is saying. Now, the very first tip that I am going to give you, which you will experience when you will be solving question, and some of you will unfortunately experience it in gate. Not now, since I, I will explain that. Whenever you are getting a question where it is telling which of these are true, be very alert, be very alert. Because there can be a question where actually it is asking which of them are not true or are incorrect. But while reading the option, you will forget that it was asking incorrect and you will take the correct ones. For example, you thought maybe that B and D are correct, right? And you will actually tick B and D, you will forget that question was asking false or question was asking incorrect or not true. So it's not happening in this question, but I'm telling you that it will happen in some questions. I will also give you such question. In Exergy question bank test series also, you will find such question. Definitely in gate, you will find such question. Gate previous year questions, you will find such question. So whenever you have to pick which of them are true, be very alert. Maybe it is asking which of them are not true. And if it is asking which of them are not true, then don't do the mistake. You have to pick which are not true. Right? We have a habit. Na? Whichever we found correct, we tick it. That's a habit because 99.9% .9 question are like that. Whichever is correct, you have to tick. That's what we have been doing. MCQ question we are solving since we were in school. Right? So that's how the habit has built. That correct, tick it. But when it is asking not true, it's the opposite that you have to do, opposite of your habit. So be very careful there. Anyway, in this question, you have to tick the true only. You have to tick which one is true. Option A, due to symmetricity, load in AC is equal to load in BD. This is option A. Due to symmetricity, load in AC, load in AC, load in this member is same as the load in this member. What do you think? Keep thinking, keep thinking, I am reading the options. For the given loading, the truss design is inefficient. For the given loading, this is a loading given, P1 and P2 loading. For this loading, the truss design is inefficient. Okay, I will explain that. Member CD experiences, this is member CD, this is member CD. Member CD experiences tensile load of 480 Newton. Okay, let's see. Member BC, this is member BC, can be removed with no change in force distribution. If I remove BC, there will be no change in force distribution. It does not affect anything. These are the four options. MSQ. Pause it. Try to solve. And whenever you feel stuck, use common sense. I am explaining the question here. Due to symmetricity, load in AC is equal to load in BD. AC and BD. Firstly, if you just look at the diagram, they seem symmetric, right? If you turn your head like this or if you rotate it counterclockwise, 90 degree counterclockwise, 
this is how it is right this is how it is so definitely it looks symmetric this and this should have symmetric design symmetric construction they have symmetric construction but one common uh, you know mistake that can be done by especially beginners that symmetricity in case of loaded members i am repeating symmetricity in you know case of loaded members is not only decided by their structure but also by the loading definitely this and this look symmetric about this line they are symmetric if i fold both of them they will totally coincide right here about this line about this line if i fold them they will totally coincide they are symmetric construction no doubt in that but is the loading symmetric no here at point d you have loading you have loading applied right but at the other point there is no loading at the other point at a there is no loading so this member is not symmetrically loaded it is structured symmetrically its structure is symmetric but loading is not symmetric question is saying that due to symmetricity or if i add one more line here just to explain due to symmetricity of structure of structure load in ac is bd it does not make sense due to symmetricity of structure only we cannot predict load load also has to be symmetric so obviously load in ac and load in bd should not be should not be same just by symmetry of structure because symmetry of load also should be there but still if you are feeling confused let's try to find out the load in ac let's start with ac there is a reason why i am starting with ac even when there is no load here and i am not starting with bd there is a reason which you will quickly understand analyzing the joint a you can clearly see that one force ac will be in this direction other force ab will be in this direction right ab and ac but at a there is no external load acting and now recall what i have told you recall the shortcuts that i have told you to quickly find out the zero force member you will be able to see that ab and ac both are zero force members both are zero force or zero load members that you can also summarize here by just doing summation of fx0 just write the equation and summation of fy0 just write both the equations and solve you will be able to conclude that fbc sorry fab is equal to 0 is equal to fac right and I have, I have already told you three four special cases where you can directly by visualization tell that this is a zero force member so clearly fac fab both are zero force members if you look at this diagram here fac fac is actually a zero force member load in ac is zero but load in bd bd that will not be zero that also you can visually look and tell if you just analyze the d this point d here there is p1 there is p2 there is cd and then there is fbd bd correct fcd fbd p1 p2 there is no logic no reason why fbd will be zero just write summation fx summation fy zero some value of bd will definitely come out there is no sense why fbd will be zero it loaded loads are acting at d it is contributing in taking the load definitely it will have some value non zero value so obviously this is not going to be equal even if you forget symmetricity and just individually analyze both of them from that also you can conclude this and i told you there is a reason why i chose point a to analyze that first because moving to point b option b a is incorrect okay this one is incorrect option a is incorrect let me rather write it here it is incorrect option b for the given loading the truss design is inefficient for this given loading of p1 and p2 the truss design is inefficient what is meant by inefficient trusses and any such structures are meant to support the load load is applied and they are meant to support the load right you can support the load by making a very strong structure very strong truss that is possible to support p1 and p2 why only these two are connect here also 
connect here also, connect here also, connect here also, connect here also, here also. Why can't you connect it like this? Connect even more, give this also as connection. One more connection, one more connection. Why are we not keep adding more and more members here? Why? Why any of the design that you see? Why you don't have, you know, structures where more and more and more material you are putting just to ensure everything is safe? Because design should be efficient. It should be a balance between load carrying capacity as well as the weight of them. Because in practical situations, whenever you are going to make such trusses, amount will be spent. Material is not free. Here we neglect the weight. Na? Here we neglect the weight. Otherwise, everything will become a, uh, that uh, frame. Because everything, everything then will have a weight acting at the center. Right? So here we ignore the weight. Considering that external loads are very high as compared to weight. So we ignore them. But ultimately, they have some weight. They are maybe made up of some steel, some iron uh, variant which costs money it is not free right so if you keep on adding more and more material not only the design will itself harm the structure because of its weight it will become very heavy right but also it will get costlier that is an inefficient design getting so here we are seeing that and please note that about this thing we will discuss even more in further subjects like strength of materials and specifically machine design there we talk about this even more and how to make the better designs okay so here truss is inefficient if the loading is like this do you agree after option a you should agree after analyzing point a you should agree why by ac ac is a zero force or zero load member AB is also zero force or zero load member. They are not contributing anything at all. They are not experiencing any force at all. You have used them here and here, but you are wasting material at, you know, by connecting them together because they are not helping the load being distributed. Rather, if you had just, just this, if you had just this and P1 acting here and P2 acting here, Without AC and AB, that also would have done the same work, same load distribution as this current setup, as this setup. Because ultimately they are not, F AC0 means what? This is the real meaning of zero force member. That they are not helping distribute or contribute anything to the load carrying capacity of the truss. They are of no use as such, right? Obviously, there can be situation when loads change. You may think, Aray, sir, then why we keep zero force member, remove every zero force member? Bhai, load is not going to remain at the same point, right? You have designed a truss like this, but maybe at some point of time, load will shift here. Again, as I told you, we will talk about this in machine design. We will talk about this is a situation when, design, when load is changing with the time. So we talk about such fluctuates, fluctuating loads in machine design. So design, the load may not act at, at the same point all the time. Right? So it may shift to some other point. Then it will be useful. So that is why we have not removed zero force member or we don't remove zero force member from all the trusses but question is saying for the given loading for this loading only when p1 and p2 are acting a b a b and a c are of no use at all so this design is inefficient it is not efficient because it's a wastage of material so this was incorrect but this option is correct Got it? Interesting, na? Interesting option, na? Now, member CD experiences tensile load of 480. So, for that, you need to analyze this member CD. So, for that, best thing is to analyze this joint D directly. If we analyze joint D, this is unknown. And this is unknown. Two unknowns are there. Easily, for a joint, we can write two equations. For a joint only. Summation Fx0, summation Fy0, right? If we do that, these two unknowns we can find out. Fcd, we will be able to find out. Let us do that. If we analyze joint D, summation Fy is equal to 0. Gives us this equation, which find out the value of Fbd, right? You can easily do that. It's one of the most basic things of trust that we have done earlier only, right? Obviously, notation we need to decide. Here is the notation where upward direction is taken positive, right? Let me rather quickly tell you, upward direction is positive, so 100 going downwards, 
is negative. FBD is cos theta component, this component, which is 5 by 13, 5 by 13, that is also negative, is equal to 0. There is no positive component, which gives us FBD is equal to minus 260 Newton, which means that FBD is actually, is actually compressive. It is compressive in nature. So this direction that we have chosen for FBD, this is the correct direction and not this. This is the correct direction. In that direction, it is going to go. Getting? So, FBD we have found out 260. Question was asking you CD. Okay. Question was asking you CD. So, BD we have found out. To find out CD, let us now do the summation of FX0 just like we have done summation FY0. Right? This is the correct direction of FBD as I explained you. Earlier, it was in the downward direction but here we found out negative. So, it is going to go in that direction. That is what I have shown here. To find out FCD, let us do summation of FX0. That is what we have done here. Summation FX0, positive X is in this direction. This is the positive X. Correct? So, there 240 is positive minus FCD and this FBD is going in this direction, in this direction. So, it is cos component again in the plus direction which you can see here. Now here, this is the theta, this is the theta, correct? So this is the theta, so this is the theta. So now cos theta is 12 by 13. It's important not to do mistakes in such cases, right? So if you prefer, you can convert that to theta directly to save confusion because here question has not given you, question has not given you this slope like this. I have del deliberately chosen that because this is 5 and this is 12. So, I have just kept that notation here just to make you comfortable with this. But if you prefer, you can just find out this theta, any theta, this theta also, this theta also and then it will be easier for you to do such, uh, you know, geometrical part. But still, just to make you comfortable, I have done this. So, 240 cos of theta. This theta is same as this theta, which is same as this theta. Cos theta, this theta is 12 by 13, 12 by 13. If you do that, FCD will come out to be 480 positive. Here FCD we have considered to be tensile only which means in CD there is 480 Newton of tensile load which is what it is written here. CD experiences tensile load of 480 Newton which is correct. Coming to option D, member BC can be removed with no change in force distribution. What does that mean? You should be able to answer it now after I have explained it to you. It is saying that if you remove CB there will be no change in force distribution. It will happen only if CB is zero force member. For example, I can remove AC and AB with no change in force distribution because they are not supporting or not distributing any load. Zero load they have. But if CB is a zero force member, only then it can be true. But if BC is handling some load, some force, removing it will cause some disturbance in the force distribution, right? So you need to just find out the value of CB. That's it. You can do that by analyzing, by picking any specific point. Let's analyze the joint B here. Because if we analyze the joint B, BC is going to come there, right? If we analyze this joint B, BC is going to come. And this AB is zero force member. So only this load I am going to have. FBC I will have. FBD I will have and here I will be have just one support just one reaction because it is roller support right so to find out force in BC you could have either chosen point C or you could have chosen point B it's up to us any any of them we can pick right so roller is simpler only one unknown is there so roller support we have picked so there will be one force FBC for now let's check it if it is zero force or not FBD and then reaction at B from the roller, right? So, this is what we have here. BX here, BC there, which we have to find out and BD here in this direction. Now, one more possible mistake here. My BD is compressive. BD, BD is compressive, right? In this direction, it is there. BD is compressive. Now, I have told this to you already in earlier unit, very first unit, but let me explain here. If BD is compressive, na? if BD is compressive, if you draw the free body diagram of joint D, then it will be towards D. FBD will be towards D if you are drawing the joint diagram of D. If you draw the joint diagram of B, 
if you draw the joint diagram of B, BD will be towards B because compressive forces always act towards them. If again I am giving the same example which I gave you in earlier unit and in strength of materials also I will give you this example. If there is a locked door, suppose this is this is the handle of a door, it is locked. If I am pulling this handle, this handle is also pulling me towards itself. Think about it. Suppose this is a locked door, this is the handle of a locked door. Door is locked. I am pulling the door. Door is also pulling me. How? Bhai, if door is not pulling me, I would have fallen. If I am, you know, leaning backward, trying to pull the door. How am I not falling behind? Because door is also pulling me, na? Balance. It's getting balanced. So, I am pulling the door. Door is pulling me. Similarly, if there is a wall and I am pressing against the wall. I am pressing the wall. Wall is also pressing me. How? If wall is not pressing me, I would have fallen ahead. Right? Action, reaction. Basic. So, here, if BD is under compression. So, if you just analyze D, D will also, is also getting compressed. If you analyze B, B is also getting compressed. And if you analyze any section of BD, if I pick, if I cut BD, and if I show you any section, this is B, and this is a section of, ahead it was going to D, but I have taken just a section of it. This is also under compression. Everything is under compression, the ends as well as the body. A basic, a ba here is the point where some student can do silly mistake. I have already explained that actually in earlier unit. In the first unit, again in strength of material, I will explain that. So here, if you notice B, BD is going towards B. BD is going towards B because it is compressive, 260 Newton. Right? We are only taking the magnitude. We are not taking the minus sign here because we have now reversed the direction. We have reversed the direction. We know it is compressive. So we are showing it like compressive with 260 Newton of magnitude. A compressive force of 260 Newton magnitude. Right? Small things. But here mistakes are possible. So here what can we do? Just FBC we need to find out. Right? So and FBD is known to us. So just do summation of FY0. If you do that, FBC upward direction. I have taken positive. This BD will have a component in the negative direction. You can do that same trigonometry geometry part and that will be in the negative direction is equal to 0. So that will give you FBC as 100 Newton tensile. Basically, FBC is non uh, zero. It is a value. It is not a zero force member. So if you remove it, load distribution will definitely change. So this is not correct. So ultimately, option B and option C are correct options for this question. True. Which of them are true? That you have to find out. Option B and C are true. If it would have asked not true, then obviously A and D were correct options. Alright.